Hey everybody, so today inside of Avid Media Composer, we're gonna look at something a little bit differently. So far, I've been teaching some traditional lessons on basic ingesting and editing and trimming and perhaps multicam or effects or something like that. But today, I'm going to look at something that a user on YouTube wanted to talk about, and that is vertical video, that being cell phone video. And I will be honest, it's something new to me inside of Avid Media Composer. Typically, I would use something like Adobe Premiere Pro to work with vertical video or some odd formats, some weird aspect ratios that weren't typical to film or video formats. And the way that I think about it sometimes is that Avid, being its fancy self, you know, the Hollywood editing system wants to work with, you know, Marvel movies and Avatar and all those great things. And they say, hey, you know, we're not really concerned about doing home movies or things that people shot on their cell phone. That's not really our thing and we're not really excited about it. So they don't put a lot of energy into making this really convenient for you in the way that other software might do. But Avid still does it and Avid can still work with video, vertical video. And we're going to look at some of the things there. So I'm going to make a project. We'll talk about some other things in here, but I'm going to make a project here, a new project, and we're going to talk about that. So we're going to make a project called, you know, uh, cell phone uh, edit, something like that. So I have this project that I'm going to make, but I'm not going to make this 1920 by 1080. I'm not going to use the HD 1080 preset at 24 frames a second. I'm going to use a custom preset because here, even inside of Avid, there is not a vertical video preset. So I have some vertical video on the desktop that we can take a look at. Um, here I have this video of my friend Tom uh, skating here, and this is some Tom skating, and this is Tom skating around this bowl. And so he did a relatively decent job, and I shot this with my cell phone because I want to make sure that I have this as a vertical video. And if you look at this in the info, we'll look at the resolution of this, and we'll go here to um, look at the info, and we'll see that this has a resolution dimensions of 1080 by 1920. So this is the resolution of this video. So we're going to bring in this video, um, and we're going to have this and work this inside here. So first things first is we're going to set a custom project. So rather than using some other resolution like 1920 by 1080, which would be the opposite, this is vertical, this was shot with my phone. So we're going to go to custom and under custom, we're going to put in our own dimensions and our own dimensions are going to be 1080 by 1920. And so we're going to make this 1080 by 1920. And it tells me that this is 1 by 1.78 is the aspect ratio. So it's telling me right there it's 1 by 1.78, which is not 16 by 9, but 9 by 16 in the aspect ratio. Uh, the frame rate we could play with if we wanted to. We could leave this at the frame rate of 23.976, or we could go to the actual frame rate of the video, which I believe is 59.94, because I think it was shot at 60 frames a second. We could look again and see, but we'll just work with 23.976, and we'll just assume that it's at that frame rate. And that's not really the issue that we're talking about today. So we're gonna have this cell phone edit at 1080 by 1920. We're gonna stick with the Rec. 709 color space. It, this is definitely not stereoscopic because, because we are not making an avatar or a Marvel movie. And so we'll leave it there. If we wanted to, we could save this preset and save this as the cell phone preset or the vertical video preset. We could go here to vertical video. And then anytime we wanted to, we could have it vertical video dash cell. We'll save it there. And this will be the vertical video cell preset as we need to. And so we're gonna create this project and build this like so. And this will build our screens. And this is now working with um, a cell phone video. We're gonna say yes to this and say cool. And so here we have this set up like there. Inside of here, we'll make this a little bit smaller and we'll bring in this video here. So if we make a sequence, so if we go here to the composer menu and go to composer, or sorry, go to the file menu and go to, uh, no, sorry. The timeline menu, uh, timeline menu, new sequence, and make a new sequence um, using the default template. We can do that, or we can hit Command Shift N, and we can make a sequence inside of there. Got to get my editing systems right all over the place. So we made a sequence here, and this sequence has nothing in it right now. We're going to call this sequence um, Cell Edit Sequence, and we have this built here like so. This basic Cell Edit Sequence that's inside of here. So we're gonna bring in this footage and start talking about some of the issues with this footage and some of the problems with this footage and what we have to do here. So we're gonna go to input, we're gonna go to source browser, and I'm gonna look on my desktop here and look for this Tom video, which is all the way at the bottom here, and look for Tom Skate and have this here. For now, we're gonna link this footage in. So we're not gonna import it, we're just gonna link it in just so we can look at it as a linked clip that's gonna come in here into the project and link this in. So here's the footage, and here is what the footage of Tom Skate looks like. Well, that's a mess. Uh, that's not good at all. That's definitely not the video we're looking for. I mean, it plays, it works inside of here, but it's definitely not the video we're looking for. Um, we definitely have some problems here. So let's talk about how, basically how Avid has chosen to 
format this in terms of there. And the way to do that is to look at this inside of the source settings. So we're gonna go into the source settings and look at how this is formatted inside of here. And what I'm concerned about is not color encoding. I mean, I guess maybe I'm concerned about color encoding, but for now, what's most important to me is Frameflex. And Frameflex uh, is kind of weird. It shows me a weird kind of layout uh, how this is designed. So it talks about some things about the original format of this video. And it says, this is 1920 by 1080 and it's 16 by nine. And it says, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. I'm 1920 by six by nine because it just assumed when it brought the video in, not that it was shot vertically, because who would shoot with a cell phone vertically? I mean, really, people, you really need to hold your cell phone sideways and shoot, you know, really cool action, extreme sports, skateboarding, Tom, here. You need to shoot them sideways. It's really the way to go. But we shot this vertically because, you know, we're we're those kind of people. I'm not going to say anything more about those kind of people, but, you know, they shoot vertical video. It happens. And so we're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with it as best we can here. So we're going to say the image aspect ratio for this is actually 9 by 16, and it's going to turn this 9 by 16. But you see here that now it's kind of having some, some problems here because this is what it's doing to the video. So now turn the video vertically, sort of, but not really, but then it turned this sideways, which means now we get into this, into this world called Frameplex. And I will be the first to admit, I mess this up all the time. So it's gonna take a little bit of play because I always get this wrong. And it's honestly, it's not something I've memorized. It's not something that I have perfectly fine, but we're saying, okay, the image of this is nine by 16. So we have this at least nine by 16, so it's at least vertical. So let's see what we can do to get this right. So first off, it's nine by 16. Um, it's, it's, it is taking the liberty of rotating this 90 degrees. There are some controls that we could rotate this back to be zero degrees, which would be that way, would look like that. So that's not right. So we're gonna do there. But now we wanna change the frame aspect ratio of there. And we wanna change this, um, maybe we change this to um, here. So we can size this smaller, so we can make this smaller so it fits in there. So we can make this bigger here like there. Let's reset this. So there's a button down here to reset this to be back to this button right here. We'll reset this back to six by nine. So now this is doing this. So now let's see if we can scale this up and have this be that big. Oh, look, look what I did there. So I kept this at six by nine. I here, down here, I rotated it 90 degrees. So I took the frame, rotated it 90 degrees. So now it's fitting this frame here and now it's here the project is nine by 16. So it made pay the project's aspect ratio. If you want to memorize that, memorize that. Honestly, 90% of the time, what I do is I keep trying these and, and, and getting them wrong. And then I figure it out and then I realize, oh, I'm wrong. And then it fixes this and then it makes it nine by 16. So now this should be this frame, not with these weird, you know, pillar box sidebars over here. Um, this should be this frame as it were cut in here. Normally, naturally, as it was supposed to be designed, it's hundred percent, this is how it should be and I have fixed it and I've made it like so. So we're gonna say okay, and then boom, okay. So now I have a nine by 16 video, which means now I could take this nine by 16 video, and we'll only take a couple seconds of this here. We'll just take from here to here. Just kind of bring this in, just a little bit of skating here. Uh, we have about nine seconds here, and we're gonna edit this into the sequence, and now we have this edit in the sequence. And if that's all you wanted to do, hey, that's all you wanted to do. That's all you needed to do to make this work like so. And now you could say, okay, maybe we'll go a step further, make these tracks a little bit larger. I'll go to here to hit Command L, make the tracks a little bit bigger, so you can see the tracks a little bit bigger. And we'll go to the effect palette, and we wanna use maybe a resize effect. And a resize effect, image resize, we could say image resize, and we could have this kind of go into effect mode just for play. And we could go in here and say, oh yeah, we wanna go into resize, this is, weirdly big. We could scale this up and zoom in on this here and have this here and zoom in like so. Now you could use the resize effect to do that, but remember, before we go crazy, before we do anything crazy with the resize effect, remember that built into here, built into the effects, and we'll just kind of remove this effect, we'll park here, is the frame flex. And so since we did some kind of frame flexing on there, it says TS right here. It says T for time. And that means that the time has been converted. The original video, like I said, I think was 60 frames a second. We put it into a 24 frame per second project, which means it's doing something to make it play back at this frame rate. So it's playing back here at this frame rate. Inside of here, it's playing back like so, which is great. But it's also doing S. And S means that there is some kind of scale. Well. Avid takes the liberty of putting in here that there is some frame flex on here. So if you look, oh look, there's some frame flex. Now frame flex is gonna go weird because this is what it looks like and this is showing effect analysis up here. Effect analysis means this is the end result of what you're getting. But now inside of here, here's what it's saying is actually, actually what it's doing is it's actually taking this video, it rotated this 90 degrees, it stretched this out, it changed the size, um, and now it's 
here at 9 by 16 and it's fitting in here like so. Is this keyframable? Yeah, you're damn right it is. And so here, you can go here and say, yeah, we're going to start here and follow this and maybe at some other point we'll add another keyframe. And we've done this with effects before if you watch other tutorials. And we can zoom in or something and have some kind of a zoom in. Or we could say move this around or whatever it may be. Um, we could adjust this here. We could turn up the locked aspect and we could kind of zoom in and get closer or whatever it may be and play around with the size however we wanted to and play around inside here and do some kind of weirdness inside of there. Let's undo that because I'm making a big mess here. So let's go back to lock aspect and we can make this smaller. So we're going to zoom in here under the frame and now this is zooming in to get a closer shot. And this would be if this was shot with my phone at 4K or something I could punch in and I could make some move like there and this will go from here to here and so it goes from the, the full shot to the close up shot and it zooms in and gets much closer as he gets further away. It gets into there. So notice that in here, it doesn't show it, but once we hop out of this and we hop out of the effect editor, we'll close the effect editor, and now we're hopped out, you're gonna see it's gonna punch in as it moves and punches in. And if you export this, simply enough, as an export, it's gonna, it's gonna export it like fine. And so that's gonna work like a charm. So that's easy enough to do. That's easy enough to work with vertical video. We can just make a vertical video project and we'll stick with vertical video projects across the board. But say for example, you were working with a circumstance where you had mixed vertical video and you know perhaps traditional video, or I'll say, I don't know, traditional video, 16 by nine HD, 19, 20 by 1080 video that you wanted to bring in here and work with that as well. So let's hop out of here, Command Shift W, and we're gonna hop out of here uh, close the project and we're going to make another project here. Okay, so we're going to hop back out to here and we're going to make a new project. We're going to do a new project and in the format we're going to choose HD 1080 23.976 in the traditional 16 by 9 good old horizontal video as we've learned to love. We'll call this project something like cell phone I don't know, finish? Yeah, let's call it cell phone finish because we're finishing in a cell phone format ultimately. We don't need to save this as a preset because obviously this preset already exists. We've used this a thousand times. And so we're gonna say new project here. We're gonna bring in a project and bring it in like so. So it makes a bin for us. Awesome here, we're gonna go to input source browser. Inside here, input source browser, we're gonna look for this Tom footage again. So we're gonna to desktop, and we're gonna bring this Tom footage in again. And we're gonna look at what this Tom footage looks like. We're gonna look at some of the issues of this Tom footage. So we're gonna link this in, and we'll take a look at a simple link, and we'll look how this footage looks, and it's weirdly stretched out. So we try to take this vertical video and stretch it out in a weird way that doesn't really work for us the way we want it to, so it's not really cool. While we're here, we're gonna to go to timeline. Thankfully, I remembered. Sequence, and make a new default sequence. And we're gonna make a sequence, we'll call this uh, cell edit. And so we have this Tom skate. What I'm also going to do is I'm also gonna bring in some other footage here. So we're gonna input source browser and I'm gonna go here to this other footage I have, which doesn't have an exciting name. It's GX011335. This is a converted or transcoded GoPro clip. I shot this originally with a GoPro, but then I converted it to a QuickTime movie. So it played back better plays back better. There we go. There's this full sentence. And so this is this skateboard footage here that I have inside of here playing back like so. So this is some traditional skateboarding or some traditional horizontal view skateboarding that was shot with the GoPro. We can get this. And we can have this in here. So we can look at this in terms of aspect of what's going on here. I mean, we'll grab it from here. I like this shot here where it comes past comes around and jumps there. We just got a eight second clip there. We're gonna throw this into the timeline and so we have this here. And this will look normal. This will look like a traditional clip like there. I'm gonna get rid of this. This is uh, set to stereo. Um, if I wanted to, I could have brought this in as mono. I could have turned that off, but we'll get rid of the, the mono tracks just for now. I'm just gonna delete them, hit delete tracks and say delete them. There, it looks a little bit more streamlined in my timeline, but let's look at Tom here. So let's look at some Tom issues of what we have going on with Tom and how we can deal with Tom accordingly. So inside here, we're gonna go again to source settings. And in source settings, we'll see how Tom is laid out. Now, Tom is laid out this way, which is cool, but not, because I want actually Tom to be horizontally, um, or horizontal. 
Good, good time with the words today, Chad. Uh, we're going to go here and we're going to set a horizontal resolution. So let's say the image aspect ratio is not 16 by 9. So we're going to assume that this is not 6 by 9 and it doesn't need to be rotated. We're going to assume the aspect ratio is 9 by 16, which makes it look like that, which is doing something crazy and doing that. We are going to choose, I believe, size magic project raster because we want this size of this to match the project raster and have this be like there. Now, right now, Tom is here, but he's turned the wrong way. We do not want to rotate him here. We want him to be the wrong way. We want him to be horizontally that way because we're going to use effects to turn him later on. If we turn him and rotate him here, that's going to rotate the box that covers him and that's not what we want. So we've rotated this 9 by 16, we've copied this 9 by 16, and we did size magic project raster, and this is all, this is exactly perfectly what we want. So now we bring this in. It fits Tom in there, and Tom looks fine. So we'll edit Tom in again. We'll grab in a couple seconds of Tom here, maybe a handful of seconds of Tom, and we will um, splice this in as well. We're going to bring this in here. We'll bring in without the audio. We'll skip the audio here and say, let's bring this in, and we'll splice this in at the end here, and then boom. Oh, let's turn the video on. There we go. That'll make a difference. Uh, let's turn the video on, and we'll bring this in here accordingly. Uh, we can close Tom out of here at the window, and we can clear this uh, monitor out and so now it's not there and so now we have this and it cuts from this clip to this clip which is clearly clearly wrong I mean this is not what we want this is not good so we need to do something to rotate this now inside of here I do have the ability to do the frame flex to rotate it so I can go in here and I can say yeah let's rotate this uh, what do you mean rotate it to the right 90 degrees and I could say yeah let's take this and rotate to the right 90 degrees but that's gonna do that and it's gonna rotate the box not the image so Let's undo that. Command Z, undo that, because that's not what we want to do. The frame flex in this case is going to rotate the box that refers to the image, not rotate the image. So in this case, what we want to do, obviously, is we want to use some kind of an effect. And so we can go to the effect palette, and I would choose maybe the 3D warp effect. We can talk about the 3D warp effect more, but for now, we're just going to use the 3D warp effect. Or we could even use the Express 3D Effect 3D PIP if we wanted to, but I think the 3D Warp is going to be more universal to cover some more things, and that will allow us to rotate a clip here. So we're going to go into the 3D Warp Effect, we're going to open up the 3D Warp Effect, which is really robust and has a whole bunch of stuff going on. It's really busy and it's really involved, and we're going to just go to Rotate, which is halfway down the screen of all these different uh, controls, and we're going to rotate, obviously, on the Z. Now, which way do we want to rotate? We want to rotate this way and rotate... Uh, 90. So we're going to rotate this. We can just type in 90 here and have this be rotate 90. Well, now it doesn't fit. So now it doesn't fit into the screen. Now it's not what we want. It's not fitting in good like so. So what do we have to do? We have to scale it. So thankfully, we have a scale control here. And if you don't know, if you ever work with, uh, say, the calculator, for example, if you take 9 divided by 16, you can discover that 56.25 is the size that you need to scale some stuff, stuff down. Um, so in order for this to fit 9 into 16, or 16 into 9, you do the math, uh, we're going to have to change this to 56.2, which is going to be just, just perfect enough size there. I, you can't do 0.25, you can do 56.3 if you wanted to, if you want to just cut up a little bit of the edge, 56.3 would be, you know, I don't know if you noticed the difference there, I didn't because I can't see that well. But you can reduce this down to there and fit this in here. So now we have this coming in here at a regular skate video and this coming in here at a vertical video like so. Now if you wanted to, what you could do if we wanted to play a step further is we could make another video track, Command Y, boom, uh, make this bigger. We could take this Tom Skate, we could raise this up a little bit vertically up here. Uh, and now this is on an upper layer. We're going to turn this on an upper layer. And we're going to do that, that news trick where we put something else behind this to make it seem like it's not just, you know, the vertical video cut out. We'll put a, another copy of this behind here. So we'll grab another copy of Tom Skate here. Let's grab Tom Skate, which is, again, sideways. I'm going to say from here to here, let's just um, mark this. And we're going to say from here to here, we'll turn the video off. And we'll just overwrite down here another copy of Tom, which this copy of Tom will be horizontal. We didn't really need the audio, so let's turn the audio off. And we'll overwrite this, the B key, and put this in here horizontally. So now it's Tom inside of Tom skating this way. Now, if you wanted to skate like this, this would be fine. If you wanted to, you could say, okay, let's go back into bins. Or sorry, let's go back to the effect palette, and let's go to 3D Warp again. And we'll rotate this so it's facing. We'll just look at video one for a second. We're going to take this in the 3D Warp. We're going to go in here, and inside the 3D Warp, we are going to rotate this on the Z-axis again, 90 degrees. We're just going to rotate it this way. And in this case, we're going to scale it up so it's nice and big. And it's super duper big. And so now we have this kind of inside of the frame 
like so inside of here framed out in that capacity like there so this is one way of going about doing it now we have this with this on top of it so it looks kind of like this we have this whole action going on this looks very exciting cool it's him skating inside of here with this you know you get the idea you get the whole thing if you wanted to you could even go in here we'll go back to video one here we'll go to effect palette we'll go to uh, image effects and we'll throw the blur effect on here now we already have the 3d warp on here so we're going to option click because one effect will replace the other effect, which is not what we want to do. We want to nest these on top of each other, or auto-nest these on top of each other, and put this on top of here. And now we have the blur effect. And the blur effect doesn't really do anything, because for the blur effect to work, we have to make a box. So we're going to go here, and hop in here, and say, let's go and make a box around this. So we're going to grab this little rectangle. I'm going a little bit fast here, sorry about that. Uh, and I'm going to go here and make a rectangle here, and blur this, and now I have a blur here. I could zoom out if I wanted to, and zoom out, and have my blur kind of be here so now i have this rectangle inside of there moving like so and have this laid out accordingly inside of here as my effect were uh, we'll hop out of effect mode for a second here because we're hopped out of effect mode cool and now i can go back to video two and i have this on top of this with the blur happening through this this will play back a little bit slower because i'm recording this so there will be a slight delay because I'm using a lot of video RAM to record this, but you get the idea. So I could do a simple blur there. I could hop into the effect, hop out of the effect, and use the blur accordingly to get what I want and have this there. So we could also maybe do this with this clip. So this clip, we want this to be 16 by 9. So now we want this to be uh, cropped to a 9 by 16. So let's go back and use the 3D warp again on this clip. Uh, we could go in here and see if the frame flex has any 3D warp controls. It has position, it has size, it has rotation, it has reformat, but that's not really working for us. Um, we don't want to change the size of this. We want to be able to crop this image. So we want to go in here and say, let's apply the 3D warp effect. There's some other effects that could do a, do a, do a crop, but I kind of want to use the 3D warp effect because I want to have this be cropped here. So we're going to hop into effect mode. Inside of effect mode, we'll go to the crop controls. We'll close on the scaling, close on the rotation, open up the crop controls and say, hey, let's crop this image to what would be equal to this resolution. So we can kind of look at this and say, hey, we want to crop this on the left side like this much. We're going to crop this on the right side like this much. And I should have written down the numbers for what a proper crop would be, but that's actually, we need to go a little bit smaller. So let's go back to effect mode here and let's say crop about, let's well, crop about, uh, we'll say negative 500 on here, or sorry, negative 200 negative 200 on here and crop this to I don't know, 200 or something like there and that's way too small let's go to negative 300 that's there's probably a math involved here that i should have had we'll do negative 330 and this is going to be uh positive 330 and so we'll cut from there to there and we'll have you know that as our vertical video we'll have that set up like there inside of that capacity you could do some more advanced math to figure out what the right size is for me to me. And we could put this obviously up top and put this above on here and then put another video behind it. And that would work as well. So that'd be another thing we could do in terms of there. Another option we could do, so another option, another approach that we could do is rather than do this, rather than have this and play with the 3D warp effect inside of here, another option that we have is let's remove the 3D warp effect. We'll undo what we just did. We'll get, throw this back down. We'll, we'll, we'll get rid of the 3D warp effect. We'll remove the 3D warp effect. And so now we're back to the video. There is something in here called mask margins. And mask margins are a nice way to look at your video inside of Avid Media Composer with some margin, with some appropriate margins that would do some things for you. So let's take a look at that. We're going to go to the settings. So we're going to go to Avid Media Composer and go to Preferences or go to File Settings, Command Shift Equal. Love that shortcut and go to look at the format settings. And in the format settings, there's a setting down here called mask margins. So let's look at what mask margins looks like. So we're going to go here and click on mask margins and open up mask margins. And it says here that mask margins are set to 16 by 9. And that's not what we want. We want obviously 9 by 16, as we've talked about previously. So we're going to choose 9 by 16. And you're going to see here it's going to change the left side to 34.18 and the right side to 34.18. 
good to know. Let's make a note of that. And we're going to hit apply. And when we hit apply, it's going to apply this. And we're going to say OK. And it's put these mask margins on here. But right now, we don't see anything. We don't see any mask margins. And that's because inside of the composer window here, this is the composer window, we can right click and choose something called target mask. Now, between you and I, I wish this was called mask margins. That would make sense because it translates to what the mask margins is. But if you look, the target mask says no mask. So we're going to choose black mask and see if this improves and shows us our black mask. And then boom, automatically we see our black mask. And now we have a black mask around this. Now, this black mask only exists inside of Avid. It will not export with this black mask. Let me show this to you. Let me close out TomSkate for a second. Uh, so now we have this here and we have this black mask, which means we don't have this set up. So it's not showing here this background here. So we're not seeing this 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 blurred out background created that we have. We're cut out to the 69 image and it's blocked out everything. If you wanted to, you could switch this to target mask mixed to black, which puts kind of a black halo around this. You'll see kind of a darkened halo where this is being kept, where this is being gotten rid of. We could also do target mask mixed to white, which shows you kind of a, 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 a kind of a add mode halo there. Uh, so we choose this. We're going to choose target mask and say mix to black and have this be in here so we can see what parts of this image we're keeping, what parts of this image we're getting rid of. Now in this case we could use, we could go through here and maybe use something like a resize. Again, image resize or even a 3D warp if we wanted to go crazy. We could use an image resize and we could say yeah, let's make sure that this is in the right place. So now as we go through here, we can watch the video and say, yeah, let's just add a keyframe for position. We're just going to go a couple seconds ahead. And now in here, it, he's not really in the frame. So by the time he gets here, we'll move the X axis so that he fits a little bit better into the frame. So now he's moving with the frame. And so we're kind of tracing along and tracking with this frame manually. So he's staying here. Obviously, as he gets to here, he goes outside the frame a little bit. We can kind of pull back. So now we're doing kind of a traditional kind of pan and zoom fitting inside this area and fitting along. We'll kind of move this to here so he stays a little, a little bit more center. We want this to be a little bit more center. And so we can hold down shift and do smaller increment motions. If you hold down shift, you go in smaller degrees and you have this here. And so now he comes around, he's still in the center of the frame and he's going to come back around. And we're there. Let's just move to here and let's just hold down this, click and shift and then move this just slightly this way like so. If we wanted to go crazy, we could do a little bit more tracking, but now he's staying inside the frame and he's holding inside the frame pretty well. And this would be our nine by 16 vertical video. This would be set up here inside of there. If we wanted to go into advanced keyframes, we go in advanced keyframes and we could change the movement maybe instead of being, it's a relatively little movement, but if we kind of open this up, we can see more of the movement that exists. There's a little bit of a frame movement there. We can open this up. We could actually switch this to spline movement, right click spline and have a little bit of curve to our movement. So it kind of just moves a little bit more naturally, more like a camera operator would. But this is a relatively decent setup. And so this is good. I'm gonna hit save because God knows every now and then you have to save. So now we have this movement inside of here. Again, this is going to be grayed out, but this, you know, if we switch this to uh, mass margins to black, we can look at this with black mass margins as an idea. So let's talk about exporting this and let's talk about some different options we have in the export of this here. So we're going to go here to the sequence here, make sure that we're clicking the sequence and we're going to go to file, output, export to file. Now in the app out, export to file, you will see some options. We're in the untitled version. So let's go to options. Let's export this as a QuickTime movie and we'll export this as a QuickTime movie and we'll change this to maybe something simple like Apple ProRes uh, family and we'll choose Apple ProRes 422 Proxy. Good enough for us. We'll set this there. You'll notice a couple ideas of things we can do to adjust this here. So one of which is, is this going in the Project Raster? Well, we can say, yes, this is going in to the Project Raster and hitting it like so. And we could say, enable mask margins. And enable mask margins would put this mask margins, would put this dark gray screen around this and put these mask margins around here. We'll take a look at that and we'll see what happens when we do that and how, what happens when we crop this to the mask margins, which means we're going to say, uh, let's save this. And we're, yeah, we'll save this and we'll just export this here, cell edit. And this is cell edit. Um, we'll just call the cell edit enable MM. And we'll just put this in the desktop. 
Yeah, and we'll put it, I'll maybe make a new folder. We'll call this cell edit. And inside of here, we're gonna enable cell edit and we're gonna say, cool, uh, this is enable mass margins. And I wanna just show you what this does. We'll let this play. Only take a couple seconds, it won't take too long. And we'll see what happens when we enable this with the mass margins, what the end result is going to be and how it's going to work. You see it's slowing down a little bit because it's getting to the effects here. The blur effect takes a little bit longer to render, so taking a little bit more time, but 30 seconds, 35 seconds out of your life. Nothing bad at all, nothing bad at all. We could talk about our feelings now if you wanted to, but no, we'll hop out of here. Or actually, we'll just go to the desktop here. We'll hop to the desktop here and we'll say, let's go to the desktop here and we're gonna go to desktop and we're going to cell edit here, and inside of cell edit, we have cell edit enable mask margins. Here's this file here. We're going to double click and show you what this did. So this made this 60 by 9. So this is a 60 by 9 video. We can make this a little bit smaller so you can see. But it put the mask margins up here. Now it left the mask margins as fully black. It made them fully black inside of here. It kept the mask margins, not grayed out, but fully black. So what we do in here, as we right click in here and change the target mask to mix to black or mix to white, it it does a full on crop. So that mass margins did a full on crop of this video. Um, it is fully cropped out. So we'll um, minimize that for a second and then we'll do this again. So now file, output to file, export to file. Now in export to file, we'll go to options again and inside of here, cell edit. We'll enable mass margins, but there's also an option down here that says crop to mask margins. Now, cropped mask margins will crop this image so that it fits in the mask margins, which will actually change this from 1920 by 1080 to 607 by 1080. Since this is coming in as a 1080 project, it's not gonna make it 1080 by 1920, it's gonna make it 607 by 1080 um, because it still is assuming that it was, the, the vertical resolution was 1080. So we're gonna say crop to mask margins um, inside here, we'll save that. Um, and we'll make sure we're in here and we'll call this uh, cell edit crop crop mm and so this will be cell edit crop mm we'll save this and we'll let this run i know another 30 some odd seconds out of your life you'll be okay it should be quicker now we could have rendered these effects probably wouldn't be quicker but it is what it is we're making we're making do we're making these decisions and we're working with it and this is actually a little quicker a little quicker Oh, see, it slowed down right there. As it gets to these complex effects, this blur effect and this 3D warp effect takes a little bit slower, you'll see that. And that's why maybe rendering at the time might have been a good thing. And so we're here, we're gonna go back to this folder here and look at crop to mass margins. And crop to mass margins did this. It actually stretched the video out. It looked at the mass margins and said, hey, I still want to make this 1920 by 1080, but now I want to stretch this out to mass margins. That doesn't work at all. Uh, that looks crazy weird. I mean, it made it work, but yeah, this is not what we're going for at all. So this is a, this was a bad decision. I mean, it, yeah, it did, it, it did a thing, but not the thing we wanted it to do. So let's not do that again. So we're going to go here again, uh, file, output, export a file and the real trick here the real trick that we're going to take advantage of is we want this to be we want this to be 9 by 16 we want this to be cell phone video so we're going to go here to options and inside options we're going to say let's leave project raster enable mass margins that's fine and now we're going to say the image output the image output we're going to choose is going to be not 19 by 20 by 10 we're going to choose a custom or we'll choose the aspect ratio instead of 6 by 9 we'll choose 9 by 16 which is going to be a 9 by 16 uh, there. So let's take a look at what this is going to do here. So we're going to at, end this as a 1920 by 1080. So this is going to come out as 1920 by 1080. We have right now project raster enable mass margins, not cropped mass margins, but project raster enabled mass margins. So this is going to take this 1920 by 1080 and it's going to change this to 1920 by 1080. It's going to change this to a different resolution of um, the different aspect ratio. So it's gonna play this a little bit differently. How it's gonna do this is by source scaling stretch, which is, I'm gonna guess, probably not what we wanna do because that's what it did before and that was not cool at all. So now in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let's do pillar box or letter box. And so we're gonna stretch this by pillar box, letter box. We could also do this by center crop as well. I think either of those will work, but well, let's take a look. This is the experiment. This is the, this is the testing phase of this. And so this is cell edit. 
hold on a second. This is cell edit. We're going to call this um, uh, image size or image ratio. Um, so we're going to save this. We're going to call this cell edit image ratio. Or we'll call this image ratio um, pillar, image pillar. There we go. That way we know what this is doing. Again, we're going to save again. It's going to take some time. We're just spending minutes now. It's going through really fast. It's going to get to the second part with the blur. It's going to be, nope, we're going to be slower. And it's going to do its job there. Once it gets halfway between, start slowing down to 35 seconds. Yep, every time. 33. Oh, 35. Command plus period to cancel this. But I just want to show you, I do, I want to take the time to show you what all four of these things are going to do. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to fast forward uh, just so you can see the final result. You don't need to watch the, you know, the banana bread cooking. You can just see what it's done. When we're done, we're going to here to cell edit. So this is cell edit crop. This is cell edit image pillar. So this is now 9 by 16. And this set this like this. So it set this to be 9 by 16 based on, yeah, this is this is not good at all. This is, again, so this was wrong. So let's see what we can do to make this work the way we want it to. This is how we test, folks. So we're going to go here to File. Again, hopefully this will be the last time. File, Export to File. We're going to go here, File, Export to File. We're going to Options. Okay, we're going to enable mass margins, sure, because um, we don't want this whole video here. We're going to set the this to center crop. So we're going to crop this here to be 9 by 16. So we're going to crop out to keep the center, take the original image, crop it down to 9 by 16 so it fits in there, so it fits into the 9 by 16 like so. Based on the image size, we're going to make this here and say save. Cool. And this is going to be uh, cell edit image crop. So this is to crop it in the image, not crop the mass margins, not crop two mass margins, but to crop the image. And we're going to say, boom. Here we go again. I know, good times. You know, it's like we don't talk enough anymore. We don't actually talk about our feelings and about, you know, how we spend our days, what we're doing. But this is a fun lesson. Again, this is something not necessarily that Avid does really conveniently by default. There's not like a preset set up for inside of the create a project thing for working with cell phone video. So it is a nice thing to approach of like, how can we solve problems? And that's what a lot of editing is. It ends up being a lot of solving problems and figuring out what works and what doesn't work and exploring different options here. Are you excited? Are you excited? I'm excited. Let's see what we got. Let's see here. Uh, this is image crop. Oh, this looks pretty good. Oh, this is 1920 by 1080. This is our 1080 by 1920. This is the video that we want. This is cut in here like so. We've edited this together as a cell phone video. I feel pretty confident. I feel pretty good about this. I feel like this is what we're looking for. So make a note of that. That's what we needed to do to get this to what we wanted it to be. Uh, again, you could still, if you wanted to do enable mass margins and have it be like this video, I mean, if you brought this in and just crop this through some of the method through, you know, Instagram or something, it would crop out this way. But you know, if you want this to maintain its cell phone verticalness, that would be the trick to doing it. So good thing we explored all those options and we looked at all those. Again, this is some things you can do. Is it easy? Is it convenient? Nah, maybe not, but it is workable. There are more tricks you can explore, more things you can do, but just don't forget that you do have inside of each of these files, especially with linked files, you do have the ability to go to source settings and you look at frame flex. And frame flex is really where the power to set this up by default is and you can play with these settings and get what you want and get this cropped and framed the way you want it to so that it is working with vertical video i think that's all we're gonna do for today uh that was pretty fun and so you know let me know what else you want to see and what else we can talk about in terms of doing stuff all right cool